Hi, welcome to this video in my series on equilibrium of a rigid body where we're looking at ladders. And in this video, what we've got here is a uniform ladder of length 4 meters and mass 20 kilograms. It rests in equilibrium with its base on a smooth horizontal floor and its top against a smooth vertical wall. And the ladder, we're told, is inclined at 70 degrees to the horizontal and is kept in equilibrium by a light horizontal string attached to the base of the ladder and to a point on the wall, vertically below the top of the ladder. And what we've got to do is find the tension in the string. Now, with this question, we've got our ladder then resting on a smooth wall here and a smooth floor no friction is involved and so naturally this ladder would want to slide away but it's kept in place by this string let's imagine then that we've got our string from here going across here to a point on the wall it's horizontal so it's going to stop it from sliding out and so there'll be a tension in that string pulling inwards. Let's just mark that in here in red. Okay, so we've got that tension. Let's call it, say, T, T Newtons. Now, what other forces would there be acting on the ladder here? Well, it'd be its weight. Now we're told that it's got a mass of 20 kilograms and it's a uniform ladder so the weight will act in the middle here and will act downwards. So we'll mark that in. Its weight, remember, will be mg so that will be 20 g newtons. Now it's a uniform ladder and its length was 4 meters so therefore if the weight's in the middle this will be 2 meters and this distance here will be 2 meters. Going back to the forces now, what other forces will act on the ladder? Well, there'll be a contact force from this wall here. It will be a normal contact force. It will act at right angles, so we'll put that force out there. It's a reaction, so I'm going to call it R, R Newtons. There'll also be another contact force from the base of the ladder with the floor and that will act perpendicular to the floor so that's going to act upwards so that's another reaction so I would normally call that R as well but these two reactions are going to be different so I'm going to call this one R1 and this one R2 are there any other forces acting on the ladder well no, because it's just a smooth wall here and a smooth floor. There's going to be no frictional forces acting at this point or this point. In later videos, we'll talk about what happens when you've got rough walls and a rough floor. But for now, these are all the forces acting on the ladder. We're also told the angle of the ladder. We're told that it's at an angle of 70 degrees. So let's just mark that angle in. It's at 70 degrees to the horizontal. Okay? Now, if we're to find the tension T newtons in a problem like this, then we handle this by resolving and taking moments. And we can take moments about any point along this ladder. It makes no difference where we take moments. At the end of the day, you should end up with the correct answer. But there's generally one place that's going to be better than all the others. And for a problem like this one, where we've got to find the tension T, it's a good idea to go to this end of the ladder, the opposite end. I'm going to call this A. And why is that the best end, best point to take moments about? Well, it's because T doesn't pass through this point. We want T in our equation. I don't really want to know anything about this reaction R1. And because this force passes through the point A, it won't enter into my equation. 
So that's really the reason why I'm going from this point here. But do experiment in this question. Try the question again, say taking moments about this point down here or even this point here. But for now, I'm going to take moments about this point. Now, we've seen in earlier tutorials how to handle moments when forces are at angles, okay, to this length here. What we need to do is to split these forces into components that are perpendicular to this line here, perpendicular to the ladder in this case. So, in other words, if I was to draw this ladder again and we've got our point here A, then at this point here I would have forces like this. I could split this R1 into two components, one out here and one down the ladder. Now normally I wouldn't draw this diagram again, I would just work off the diagram that I've got. But this is just to hopefully simplify the problem at the moment. As for the weight, the weight acts downwards, but I can split that into two components. One perpendicular to the ladder, that would be that way, and one down the ladder. And do remember that these components must be either side of the force that you've got. Okay? What else have we got? We've got this reaction up here. That's inclined to the ladder. It's not at right angles. So I can split R2 into two components. One will be up the ladder, like so, and the other one will be perpendicular to the ladder in that direction. And as for the tension here, we can split that into two components. One up the ladder and one perpendicular to the ladder, like that. Now it's the perpendicular ones that are of interest to us. The ones along the ladder will not have any effect in turning about A because those forces pass through A. So we need to work out what these forces perpendicular to the ladder are. The components, in other words, of these forces perpendicular to the ladder. So we need to put some angles on. So let's just put some dotted lines that are perpendicular here. Okay, we've got one there. We've got one out here. Um, we've got the one that goes across here. Now, those angles, let's have a look, see what we've got. We can see that if this is 70 degrees, this line here is parallel to the floor, so this angle in here must be 70 degrees. So I mark that in as 70 degrees. When it comes to this area here, we should be familiar with this, that this angle here will be 70 degrees. We've seen this kind of concept before on inclined planes, where the angle here to the normal is always the same as the angle of the plane. So you should be familiar with that, that that angle there is 70 degrees. And when we come round here, this being 90 degrees, this will be 20 degrees to make us up to 90. And then this angle in here is 90 degrees. So this angle in here will also be 70 degrees. So, that means that we can now split our forces into components. Notice how I'm using the 70 degrees all the time. I'm not going for the 20 degrees. Always work with the angle that you're given. I find that's a lot easier. Okay, so what is the component of R1 perpendicular out in this direction to the ladder? It's this one here. That component, because it doesn't contain the angle, is going to be the sine of 70 degrees. It's going to be R1 sine of 70 degrees. And that would be measured in Newtons. The one down the ladder would be R1 cos 70 degrees. I'm not going to write it in because we don't really need it. For this one here, the component of the weight perpendicular to the ladder 
It contains the angle, so it's going to be cos of 70 degrees, the cosine of 70 degrees, 20g cos 70 degrees. Let's write that in then. That's going to be 20g cos 70 degrees, and that's going to be measured in newtons. So that's that perpendicular force of the weight then to the ladder. Again, the one down here would be, in fact, 20g sine of 70 degrees because it excludes this angle in this 90 degrees. But I'm not going to write it in because it's going to have no effect in the turning about A. We come down to here and we think of R2, the reaction R2. That can be split into components, one up the ladder and one perpendicular. The one perpendicular contains the angle of 70 degrees, so if it contains it, it's the cosine of it. This component then will be R2 cos of 70 degrees, and that will be measured in newtons. For tension, T, T newtons. Then we've got, that can be split into two components, one up the ladder that contains the 70 degrees and the one out here, this one here, that doesn't contain the 70 degrees. So if it doesn't contain the 70 degrees, it's the sine of the angle. So this force here will be T sine of 70 degrees and that being Newton's as well. So there's our components then, perpendicular to the ladder. As I said earlier, you don't necessarily need to draw this diagram. You should be able to just see them from here. But this is just done so that you can hopefully appreciate what's going on. Right, now, I'm going to want to get T Newtons involved in an equation. So I'm going to take moments about A. So if we take moments about A, we need to set up a positive sense. And I'm going to take clockwise as being the positive sense. It's totally up to you which way you go, but I'm taking positive because I can see that this force that involves T here is going to want to turn in a clockwise sense about A. Remember in the past you could use a ruler, for instance, to represent the ladder. Put your finger on the end of the ruler at A, and if you push in this direction, you'll find the ruler will want to turn in a clockwise sense about A, the positive sense. So that's why I'm taking clockwise as positive. So if we take moments then, we're going to need a few distances in. So let's just put these distances in. That's two meters there and two meters on that stretch. So for the moment of this force, T sine 70 about A, it's going to be the force, T sine 70 degrees, multiplied by the distance back to A, which is going to be 4 meters. Then if we look at this force here, R2 cos 70, it's going to want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense, a negative sense. So its moment will be the force, R2, cos 70 degrees. That's the force multiplied by the distance back to A, which again will be 4 meters. Then we've got the component of the weight here. Its moment will be 20g cos 70. It wants to turn it about A in a clockwise sense, the positive sense here. So it's going to be plus 20g cos of 70 degrees. That force then multiplied by the distance back to A, which will be 2 meters. Now for this other force, R1 sine 70 degrees, well that has no effect about A in turning it, because the force passes through the point A. So this is the resultant moment, and it must equal zero because the ladder is in equilibrium. Now if I look at this equation, I want T, but I've got this unknown R2 in it. And I should have seen that that was going to happen because I was going to take moments about A and it was clear that I was going to have an equation with T in and with R2 in. So I can get R2 by resolving, resolving in a vertical sense. And this is what we tend to do. 
In questions like this, you'll always find that you've got a resolving equation to do and a moments equation to do. So if we resolve vertically, taking upwards as positive, we've got R2, all of R2 acts upwards. We've got minus the weight, that acts downwards, minus 20G. As for R1 and T, they're perpendicular to this direction, so they're not going to enter into the equation. So this is the resultant force on the ladder, and because the ladder is in equilibrium, that resultant force must be equal to zero. So it follows from this that if I make R2 the subject, R2 would equal 20G. And I can substitute this now into the equation below. Now, another thing I can do, not that you have to do it, but it just means I've got less trigonometrical functions in, is I could divide through by cosine of 70 degrees, because it will take out this and this, but when we get to this part, we've got sine 70 over the cosine of 70, which will leave us with the tan of 70 degrees. So I'm going to do that. Tidying up this term here then will give me 4t, but sine of 70 then over cosine of 70 is the tan of 70 degrees. For this term, cosine of 70 degrees is gone now, we've got 4r2, minus 4r2, but r2 is 20g, so it's going to be minus 80g. And now the cosine of 70 has gone in this term, we're just left with plus 2 times 20g, which is plus 40g. And that will equal 0. Now if I clean this up, we've got minus 80g plus 40g, which is minus 40g. Add that to both sides, I then end up with 4t tan of 70 degrees equals 40g. I can now divide both sides by 4 and tan of 70 degrees, and that therefore gives me the tension T is equal to 40g divided by 4 tan of 70 degrees. Work that out in your calculator, and you should find you get 35.66 and so on. Round that up to, say, three significant figures, and you've got 35.7 newtons to 3SF and there's your tension. The tension in the string then that's stopping that ladder from sliding back to the right. Now as I said earlier, you don't have to draw this diagram here. I certainly wouldn't normally. I've just done this to hopefully simplify the question for you. But I would work off this diagram. Do my moments equation about A, and then do my resolving equation. And that's normally the routine that we would follow in questions like this. Do try and experiment though. Try and experiment with taking moments, say, about this point. If you do, you'll have an equation with R1 in. And what you could then do is resolve not vertically, but horizontally. And if you do that, you'll have R1 minus T equals zero. So the tension T would equal R1. So if you took a moments equation then about this point, you can then substitute for R1 as T in that equation and solve it. Try it. You should find you get exactly the same answer. Okay?